Hey guys, Patrick Reese here for another video. This video is going to be slightly different than I normally do. Um, it's going to be sort of like a vlog slash tutorial on uh, astrophotography. And so if you've got an A7, Sony A7 or, or even if you've got one of those DSLR cameras or those crop sensor cameras, um, stick around, watch the video, we'll take out, we'll go out there, take some shots, come back to the computer and open Adobe Lightroom and um, we'll edit them and get, them to get the photos to look something like these ones here. Um, I've got this new camera. I used to have a Sony a7, but I upgraded. This is a Sony a7 Mark III um, It's meant to be really good in low light. So I want to test that out tonight for the first time This is a budget sort of uh, lens. It's a Samyang 14mm manual focus f 2.8 lens uh, It's pretty cheap. I think I got it for about $300 um, Yeah, so it's a really good starting lens for astrophotography um, Tonight I'm gonna head out to this creek in it's called Pikes Creek in near Bacchus Marsh in Australia. Um, it's got really low light uh, pollution there. So there's a couple of apps that will come really in handy if you're interested in learning how to do, uh, how to shoot astrophotography and the Milky Way and things like that. So the first thing you want to probably check is um, the light pollution area. You need to go to a lot of dark area with no, to little to no light pollution. So this is the, um, an app called Light Pollution Map. Um, you can get it for the Play Store if you've got Android and app, the App Store if you've got an iPhone. So for example, let's look up Pikes Creek. This is where I'm heading out tonight. So it's pretty self-explanatory. I'll just go over the basics. Uh, Melbourne, so that's in the city. Red is very high light pollution. You won't see any stars or you'll get the very little Milky Way um, out of your photo. Orange, yellow, uh, and now we head up to the outer suburbs, um, light green. So this one's in a dark green area, and obviously bl light, dark blue is better, and then you've got like no light pollution at all, which is probably the best, uh, which is no color. So anyway, let's look at where I'm heading out. So that's Pikes Creek, so um, I've already, it's best to go there during the day to figure out like your composition, things like that, because it's pretty hard to see at night. And there's another app called Photo Pills, I think you need to pay for this one, but it's a trust me, it's pretty really, it's really good. So let's look. So I've already set my point uh, to the area that I want to get at, and see that those dots, that's the Milky Way. So at this, on um, at dusk, uh, there's no Milky Way visible, but as soon as you get at night, see how it's starting to appear. So that's going to appear uh, southeast first, read it, and um, through the night it's going to go up. That's right above your head that's up in the sky and then it, then it goes down west and those big dots in the middle is the milky way core so that's what you most people want to photograph because it's the most visible so i'll be pointing my camera west which is west there and um yeah we'll, we'll go from there so another, i'll show you another really awesome feature that all photo pills has it's uh, the night auto augmented reality um, so if you click this button down the bottom here, Night AR, it shows you, I'm just in my backyard, I thought my backyard would be an easier way of explaining it. Um, it shows you where the Milky Way will be and you can see your composition. So like, for example, like, let's pretend that we're at the site where we want to photograph the Milky Way. So right now, let's click, if you click now on the top right hand corner, that's the time now. So that, Actually, the Milky Way is, uh, although it's crowded, you can't see it. The Milky Way is actually right there. That's the core. And uh, it's 5 p.m. So, like, this is east. So, if you slide your, if you slide from left to right using your finger on your phone, it keeps going up. See, now the core is right above my head. If we point the camera west, which is where I'm going to be facing it, uh, so west, say let's go 1 p.m. It's facing west and it's up there. So it keeps going down. So you want to work out like whatever your composition is, where you want the core to be. So just say, for example, see that little flue there on my um, pot belly oven? Let's just say I want to photograph the Milky Way right where the core is, right above my flue. You can line it up with the time. So you've got to go at the time where it says 
on the top left hand, you've got to photograph at that time. So you've got to get there before that time and photograph at that time. So yeah, that's another awesome feature. I've used this many times. And this is a perfect example of using the night augmented reality feature on photo pills. Uh, I took this um, about a month ago in Little River. Um, see how you can line up the Milky Way with your composition. So I lined up the Milky Way core, which is in the middle here, with the crucifix um, on top of this church. So yeah, it's really, really handy. Um, also, you want to look at the moon phase. You want to make sure it's either no moon or like the, f the moon phase has just started from a new moon. Or even, or you can even check that the moon's going to be set after you go out. So it'll be like no moon at all. At all. If the moon's out, and it's almost a half moon, if it's over half moon or if it's a full moon, it'll wash out the Milky Way a lot. You can see here, see the moon phase tonight. Today's, no, today's not Tuesday. Let's go to the date today, now. So it's just before quarter moon and the moon's gonna rise. Well, the moon has risen at 11 a.m. today and it's gonna set at 10.30, 10.23 p.m. So that's really good. Okay guys, let's go over the camera settings real quick. The first thing you want to do is switch your uh, camera to full manual. So just turn the dial to manual, which is the M. So hit menu, make sure your file type is set to raw and uncompressed. Long exposure noise reduction is off because we can fix that in post-production in Adobe Lightroom. It's drive mode, if you have an interval rometer or a Remote trigger, you can have it. You can leave it at single shooting, but if not, um, set it to self timer, uh, either two seconds or even better, ten seconds. Uh, this is mainly because when you hit your finger on the trigger, it causes tiny little vibrations, and you don't want your camera to move at all uh, with a long exposure. Have your focus area set to wide. The Milky Way is very wide. You can leave your white balance at auto because uh, we can change that in post-production in Lightroom without degrading the quality of the image. Uh, dynamic range optimizer, I'll turn that off. One handy thing the A7 Mark III has is a touch operation. So that's in uh, page two on the little briefcase tab. Uh, leave that, put, turn that on and then when you Go to focus in on a star, you can touch the screen and move the little box, if you move your finger, the little box on the left hand side of the monitor will move as well. There's no stars here because I'm just showing you inside, but uh, when you see a bright star, you tap on that and um, yeah, you can focus on in on that uh, with the focusing as well. Um, I don't have a lens connected at the moment, but you want it set to full manual. Sorry. Full manual, so you can manually focus, and then you'll use your focus magnifier touch uh, option to focus in on that star really close. And then basically what you want to do is try and get the star as small as possible. Have your focus peaking on. Um, I have mine on to medium, but you can set yours to high as well. And I set mine to red, so you can see it better. It's All right, so that's pretty much it for now. Uh, I'll see you when I when I get there, and uh, hopefully we can get some good shots. See you soon, guys. Just arrived at Pikes Creek car park. Um, it's really dark out here, but um, stars look alright. Or oh, yeah, they look beautiful actually. Um, so yeah, we'll take some shots and. Um, Hopefully they turn out good. There's actually three spots that I want to check out. Um, I marked them when I came here during the day. Um, so we'll, we'll go to the first spot, take some shots, and then we'll go to the other two. Um, so I'll see you back at home. Uh, open up Lightroom on the computer, and we'll start editing them. Hopefully they turn out good. See you guys. Okay guys, we're back here in Lightroom. Um, I've recorded all my photos. Um, I think I took a total of 66, but I'll filter through all of them and just picked a few good ones. So I've picked about one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. This group here is a stack of four. Um, they managed to get four good ones in a row. Um, some intent, like 
one after the other consecutively taken. So I might try and stack those for um, to give it some noise and make it try and make it as sharp as possible. But for now, for the for the video, I'll just um, color grade one. Um, so this one I've already color graded. Um, this is the this is the color grade version. This is the raw version. So I'll just show you um, what it looks like after I've color graded it. So it looks doesn't look too bad to me. Um, I'm really happy with how the rocks turned out. A little bit of um, over over highlights here. I think I was pointing my light my headlight in that direction. Um, but um, yeah, this is the first time I've done this with uh, lights and stuff. So um, not not too. I don't think it's too bad for a first go with lights. Um, we'll, uh, we'll edit a one from scratch just to show you how I do it. Let's try go this one. So white balance. Uh, um, if you look up like other astrophotography guys, uh, they do it this way. So you put your vibrance and saturation all the way up to 100, and you adjust your white balance. Try and get a mixture of colors. So apologize for my croaky voice. If it's croaky, I'm still getting over a cold. So. Pull back and adjust our tint. So you don't want it like too blue or too purple. Just sort of want to get a mixture of colors. Probably about plus three, I think. So then, and then you reset your vibrance and saturation, and it should look like a black and white. Um, sort of sky. So let's increase clarity first. Texture. Texture is a new thing in the latest Lightroom version. Um, increase exposure a bit. Whites. Bit of light pollution there, so you've got to be careful with this bit. Can't push it out too much, but we can put a gradual, like a radi uh, a radial filter there. Might be able to fix it a bit. Increase shadows, make the foreground pop out a bit more. All the way to 100 too. So yeah, see, there was pointing the light in this direction here, on the left of that left of that rock. Highlights. Um, I'm just going over this really quick, guys. I mean, you obviously you you want to probably play around with it and just tweak it a little bit more than what I'm doing, but otherwise this video would take too long. Um, just increase the saturation a bit. So now you can see what colors out of the Milky Way coming out. And you now the foreground is looking a bit too oversaturated. So what we can do is get this. That's a linear gradient filter. So we can just put that over the top a bit. See it darkens it a bit. And maybe reduce the highlights a bit. And what you can do is get a spot filter as well. Um, flow feather, yep, flow is about 75. Press O so you can check what you're painting. Just paint over this rock. Might paint a bit heavier here as well. Press O again and to get rid of the red, we can just maybe reduce the highlights first. That's too much. What happened to the highlights? There we go. And we increase the exposure a tiny bit, reduce the saturation a tiny bit. Finish that with a gradual filter. 
just select that. I might just try and make it a little bit brighter. Okay, now, now with that radial filter, what I did my, I think it was, I can't remember which picture it is, might be this one or that one, but you can just put it, oops, move that a bit, put it over the uh, light pollution, and, oh, that's too much. Um, highlights. Uh, maybe some just the whites as well. You're not going to get it perfect, but. You could probably do a better job in Photoshop, but I'm not really good with Photoshop. Okay. We should make it a bit more sharper, but probably need to reduce the noise as well. So it's a bit of noise there in the dark areas. You don't want to reduce it too much because the stars won't look very, very poppy. Make sure that horizon is pretty straight. The computer's running a little slow at the moment while I'm recording. Looks pretty good. Yeah, it's not too bad. All right. So that's probably pretty much it, guys. That's like a real quick edit. You can spend hours and hours. Uh, sometimes what I like to do as well is, um, you know, how I was showing you that spot, spot, um, just sorry, what, what did I call it before? Spot metering, adjustment brush, where I painted the rock a bit. You can do it with the Milky Way as well, make it pop a little bit more. Um, but yeah, I'm not going to do that right now. Um, let's see if I can sync that into this one. That's me holding my really bright flashlight that I bought. Uh, let's see if we sync it and we'll just see if the colors come out the same. Wow, look at that flashlight, it's way too much. <laughs> Let's reset that. Yeah, that torch is too bright. <laughs> this is my other torch, it's not as bright. And it's got a better, um, a more narrow uh, angle of um, beam angle. So let's try and sync that to that one. That looks better. Foreground's a little more dark. Looks like I'm holding some lightsaber. It's pretty full on, isn't it? It's like a little it's like a laser pointing out of my hand. Look like a bloody transformer or something. Or some sort of space god. <laughs> space god on Mars. <laughs> uh, I make myself laugh sometimes. So that's it for this video guys, uh, this is actually my second ever tutorial on YouTube, so hopefully I did okay. My first one was uh, GoPro Milky Way time lapse, um, so if you've got a GoPro, check it out, um, link in, just up here and I'll leave it in the description. I'm going to start a new series on my YouTube channel, it's going to be about more tutorials on uh, photography, uh, filmmaking and, um, and gear. Uh, if you're new to my channel, give us a su uh, subscribe. 
If you liked my video, give us a like. If you didn't like it, give us a thumbs down. And I'll see you in the next video. See you guys.